For six weeks, we've been looking at you are shaped for significance. We've been talking about how God makes every person individually unique through a series of five different things. We've used the word shape. S stands for spiritual gifts. H, God gives you a heart. There's things you love to do. Others you don't. A is abilities. God gives all of us a lot of abilities. P is personality. Today, I want to wrap up this series by looking at your experiences. How God has customized the experiences that you have had to make you, you. Your experiences have helped shape you. All of us operate on what has been called a personal referral system. It's kind of a data bank of memories and experiences that you've stockpiled into your mind. Every time you see something, or you feel something, or you hear, hear something, you immediately attach it to some frame of reference. And in your mind, you think, does this jive with my experience? Does this agree with what I've experienced in the past? Does this correlate with what I know to be true? For instance, if I were to say to you that parenting is easy, that does not jive with some people's experience. You would either be saying, yes, I agree, it's easy, or absolutely not. Or I partly agree, based on your experiences. If I were to say high school was a lot of fun, some of you would say yes. Others would say no. All because we've had different experiences. And you have been shaped by many different experiences. Some of them were by your choice. Others of them were beyond your control. For example, there are family and relational experiences. Obviously, people have a tremendous influence in our lives. There's educational experiences. The schools, the books, the seminars. The training that you have gone through helps shape you. There are spiritual experiences. Those meaningful times that you've had with God. Times when you make commitment, often in a time of crisis. Those experiences have shaped you. There's vocational experiences, your career, your job. And yes, Painful experiences. All of these, even painful experiences, have helped shape your life. We talk many times about how God made you for a purpose and He has a plan for your life. He also has uniquely designed experiences for you which are both purposefully and personal. The Bible says very clearly that the experiences that come into your life are not random. They're not by chance. They're not freaks of nature. But God intentionally has a purpose behind them. Number one, my experiences, your experiences, are intended to teach me to trust God. 2 Corinthians 1 says, This happened so we might learn to trust not in ourselves, but in God. Folks, you never know, you're never going to know that God is all you need 
until he's all you've got. Sometimes God knocks our props out from under us and everything falls flat and things do not go the way we want them to go because God knows you will never know that he is all you need until he has all you got. God has allowed experiences in our life, in your life and mine, to teach you that he is trustworthy. Number two, my experiences are intended to build my character. Folks, you don't build character by reading about it. You grow character by experiencing it, by making choices when you're tempted to do the wrong thing. <clears throat> Romans 5 says, we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Circle that word character. Suffering actually builds character in our lives. The experiences that are there are there to teach you. For instance, the character quality of integrity. Integrity is learned when you do the right thing, when it would be so much easier to do the wrong thing, and you're tempted to do the easy thing. Endurance is learned when you keep on keeping on. When everything in you wants to give up. Responsibility is learned when you keep your commitments even at great personal cost because you said you would do it. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 20, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. Folks, that's true. It's when God turns up the heat that we change. How many of you have parents that told you, don't touch the stove, it's hot? How many of you <coughs> touch the stove anyway? How many of you told your children, don't touch the stove, it's hot? <coughs> How many of you had children that touched it anyway? It seems that each generation must learn that the stove is hot. <clears throat> Some things, folks, we only learn it by getting burned. And some of you have learned some very tough lessons in life by getting burned. Sometimes all of the good advice in the world just, just simply does not get through. And some things, the only way you learn it is by experience. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. Number three, my experiences are intended to accomplish God's purpose. Folks, there's a purpose behind it. For instance, the instance, the Apostle Paul was taken to Rome as a prisoner. He was placed in a dark dungeon jail. He was chained to a Roman centurion, one of Caesar's guards, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yet from that very prison, Paul could write in Philippians 1.12, whatever has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Paul says, yes, it's tough on me right now, but there is a greater purpose behind it. Now, what was that purpose? One, God used him to write a lot of the New Testament. The other, folks, He's got a captive witness that he can, a, a captive person he gets to witness to. That guy was chained to him. He couldn't get away. 
In fact, history tells us that it was just a matter of few years and there were actually members of Caesar's household who had become believers in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Where did they hear about it? Those elite guards went back and talked. There are many experiences, folks, in life that we do not understand and we simply cannot explain. We're going to just have to wait until we get to heaven to figure them out. But in the meantime, whether you can figure out why or not, I want to talk for a few minutes about how to make the most of your experiences here on earth. How to get the best of them. How to use the experiences of life. Folks, experiences can make you bitter or they can make you better. The difference between bitter and better is the letter I. I make the difference. It's your choice. You get to choose whether the experiences you're facing and you face will make you bitter or better. Now there are four steps that you can take to help you make the most out of your life experiences. Number one is examine. Examine your experiences. Look at them and take some time to review them. Think about your life. Don't just live up, live it. <clears throat> the question you want to ask is, what really happened? What has really happened in my life to date? What has really happened in that circumstance, in that experience? For example, don't just say the job was a good experience. Ask yourself what aspect of that job was a good experience for me. That's a good clue about what you ought to do in the future. Instead of saying, I really enjoyed that class, say, what is it about that class that I really enjoyed? Look behind the experiences, both good and bad. What was it that didn't work in that experience? What was it that I didn't enjoy? What was it that I did wrong? You examine your experiences. The Bible says this is very important. In Galatians, the third chapter, it said, Did all of your experiences mean nothing at all? Surely it meant something. Unexamined experience is wasted. You experience it, but you don't let it benefit your future if you don't look at it. You need to examine your experiences. It is especially important for us to look at our failures. Why didn't it work? What went wrong? Look for a pattern. Don't waste the hurt. Don't waste the pain. Stop and examine and say, what went wrong? Phillips translates Galatians 3, 5 this way. He said, has all of your painful experiences brought you nowhere? Sad to say, a lot of people, it has brought them nowhere. They're not better, they're just bitter. It's that old statement, those who fail to study history are doomed to repeat it. If you don't examine your experiences, you will find yourself making the same mistakes over and over and over. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that the fool never learns from mistakes. Why? He's not teachable. Experience does not teach everybody. Experience only teaches the teachable. Experiences only help those people who stop and examine the experiences that they've had. Number two, extract the lessons you have learned. 
You look for insights. You look for principles. You look for truth. Say, what can I learn from this experience? Folks, when you're going through situations, you don't want to ask why, but what? Don't say, why is this happening, God? You may not find an answer to that. Say, God, what do you want me to learn? Experience is an educator. Let's face it, the school of hard knocks teaches you some things that that's the only way you're going to learn. Now, let me give you two rules in this school of experience. Number one, if you flunk the test the first time, you get to take it again. And you get to take it again. And you get to take it again until you learn from it. Number two, just about the time you think you've graduated, God makes up a new course. You start thinking, you know, I'm sort of maturing, and I got this all together, and God looks at you and says, no, nope, you got a whole lot more to learn. Deuteronomy 11 says, remember what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with Him. It says, remember what you have learned from the Lord. How? How do you learn about the Lord? Through the experiences with Him. If I needed to define maturity, I would say that Christian maturity is the ability to find lessons in everyday life. Maturity is the ability to extract lessons from your experiences of life. To be able to see what is the truth, what is the principle, what is the essence, what is working and what is not working. And I think that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to grow up and mature and learn to see lessons in life. Notice he says, remember what you've learned. Circle that word, remember. Why does God want you to remember the experiences of life? So you don't keep making the same dumb mistake over and over and over. You learn from it. You know, I think this was the biggest problem of the Israelites in the Old Testament. Remember, they had short memory. They kept forgetting. And they kept getting in trouble as a result. When the Israelites were in Egypt for 400 years of slavery, God brought Moses. And he did 10 magnificent plagues. He did a tremendous, it was a tremendous expression of God's power. But soon they forgot about that. Just a few days later, they're in the Red Sea and they're panicking and worrying. They have forgotten what God had already done. So God opens the Red Sea. They walk through to the other side. And they get on the other side and, oh no, we are in the desert. We don't have any water. God gives them water. They would forgotten about what God had done in the Red Sea. See, so he brings them water. They get water, and then it's, oh no, oh no, we don't have any food. God brings them food. And they just keep forgetting all of good, God's goodnesses and all the times that he had bailed them out and helped them time and time again in the past. I think that's why the Bible keeps telling us over and over, remember, 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 learn the lessons. And folks, I think the best way to, to know this is to write it down so you don't forget it. I think a very practical thing you can do as a personal aid for your spiritual growth and for your success in life is to get a journal and keep a journal of lessons that you have learned. Now, I'm not talking about a diary. I'm talking about a simple journal of lessons. 
you stop and you think through the experience and you think, what did I learn from that? And you write it down. Why? So you can go back and review it. Why? Because you don't want to go through that painful experience again. You want to learn from the experience. You don't want to go through the heartache again. And certainly you do not want to waste the pain. So you need to write it down. Write down the lessons you've learned. And they continually remind you, don't do this again. But folks, I've learned something. You don't write it down, you're going to forget it. You simply have it. You will forget it and you'll have to relearn it. Number three, <coughs> exploit the experiences of others. Tap into them. Get into a network and learn from other people. The average person in life learns from experience. Folks, the wise person learns from the experiences of others. And the fool learns from neither. It's wise to learn from experience. I touched it and got burned. But it's a whole lot wiser to learn. They touched it. They got burned. I'm not going to do it. So you've got to learn from the experiences of others. It's quicker. And folks, it's certainly a whole lot easier. You need to exploit the experiences of others. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 27, people learn from one another just as iron sharpens iron. How do you learn from others? You learn to ask the right questions. God not only plans experiences in your life intentionally and person, personally, but I think God also brings people into your life for a purpose so that you can learn from them. And the people that are around you are put there intentionally. Some of them for good examples. Some of them for examples of what not to do. And folks, we need to learn the difference. You need to exploit the experiences of others. We need to learn from each other. Proverbs 25 says, A warning given by an experienced person to some will, someone willing to listen is more valuable than gold. Folks, sometimes the best advice is for somebody that's already done that goofy thing. They've been there. They can say to you, I've been there. I know what it's like. This is how I work through it. Let me save you some pain. We need to learn from each other. But I want to remind you that the richest source of human experience is not just the people around you, but the Bible. It is filled with thousands of years of stories, of examples of people that we can learn from. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, these things happen to them. He's talking about the people in the Old Testament as examples and were written down as a warning for us. Now, folks, the Bible tells the truth. You can read some good biographies, but they don't always tell the truth. The Bible always tells the truth. So when it talks about people, it gives you the good, the bad, and also the ugly. Because it's honest. When the Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart, it also says that he committed adultery and murder. When the Bible says that David was a great leader and a writer of inspiring songs, it also tells us that his family fell apart because the Bible tells the truth about people. Folks, if you want a graduate course in life, immerse yourself in the Bible. Exploit the experiences of 
others. Look at Abraham and Moses and David and the, and the disciples. Exploit the experiences of others by studying God's Word. Now I want to remind you that although experiences are helpful and God uses them in your life and mine and they help teach us they're not infallible. Experiences can be misleading. They can be misinterpreted. Experience is not always reality. For instance, you can be misled by an experience. I could bring a magician up here on stage and he can make a beautiful woman disappear and a lion appear in her place. You have experienced the disappearance of the woman. You would experience the appearance of the line. You would experience it, but it's not reality. So just because you have an experience does not mean it's true. Experiences can be caused by all different kinds of things. Personality, the devil, sleight of hand, drugs, many different reasons. That's one of the big problems of the new age movement. It's built on experience. I've experienced it, it therefore must be legitimate. Folks, I can give you a dozen illegitimate causes of experiences. So what we need is a standard for life so that we can evaluate everything that happens and we can judge it What is that standard? It's God's Word. God's Word is always truth. Always use God's Word to judge your experiences. Experiences can be misleading. They can be misinterpreted. They can be misunderstood. They can be an illusion. I think a mark of maturity is that if I experience something and that it contradicts God's word. I'm going to choose God's word over my personal experience. Because I figure I can be wrong. But if I set myself up and say I experience this. Even though the Bible says the exact opposite. What I am saying then is my experience is more legitimate and more reliable than God. What you're doing is setting yourself up. Of as God. When the Bible says the exact opposite, what does that say about your experience? It comes from the wrong source. That's what it says. And last of all, employ your experiences to encourage and help other people. Utilize them. Utilize your life experiences for the good of other people. Folks, if you don't use your experience, what good is it? If all you have is those experiences stockpiled into your mind and you don't benefit anybody from them, what's the value of it? First Thessalonians 5 said, encourage one another and help one another. Encourage one another and help one another. Circle the two ways that you can employ your experiences. You can use your experiences in life to encourage others. And you can use your experiences to help others. And I think this is very important in our society today. Let me give you an example. The Bible tells us in Titus the second chapter. That older women are to use their experiences to train younger women and encourage younger women. In the same chapter, it says that older men who are more experienced in life and in business are to use their experience and their wisdom to teach and train and encourage younger men. Folks, that's what it's all about. That is one of the reasons we need the church God does not expect you to have this experience and not use it to help anybody else. 
He wants you to employ it. In fact, it is critically needed. Who are you sharing your life experiences with? Folks, if you've been alive more than 10 years, you've got some experiences. And God intends you for you to use it to encourage one another and help one another, it says. Folks, there is unwrapped wealth of experiences sitting in this room right now that are probably going unused. There's incredible talent, incredible experiences. God brought us together also from all different kinds of backgrounds. He shaped us all different. God brought you here. I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe that God intentionally brought you to this church family because you have something that this church family needs. And they have something that you need. God made you for a purpose and he has given you experiences for a purpose and you have something to offer. Every one of you. You have something to offer because of your experiences. And you need to offer it for your own emotional and physical and spiritual and mental health. You need to offer it and God expects you to offer it. Some of you have experienced some very deep hurts in life. Maybe just recently, the death of a loved one, a painful divorce that rips your heart out, a prolonged illness, cancer, you were laid off from work, you went through bankruptcy, your kids just completely flipped out and went crazy. You've had a major crisis. You have experienced some kind of hurt and God expects you to use that hurt to minister to others. He expects you to use that experience to encourage and help others in what they're going through. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, God gives us comfort in all of our trials so we in turn may, may be able to give the same sort of of strong sympathy to others in their troubles that we receive from God. This means if we experience trouble, it is for your comfort and spiritual protection. God has taken you through some big problems and he's comforted you and he has helped you. And usually he does that through a good Christian friend. And he brings you through those troubles. And he's brought you through those difficulties so you can turn around and encourage others with the help that you have received, with the lessons that you have learned, the experiences that you had. God wants you to help others through what you have already gone through. Folks, that's called ministry. It's called serving one another. God expects you to have a ministry. Don't waste your hurt. If you have gone through pain and you're just holding it in, what good is it? But if you examine it, you learn from it. You extract lessons from it. You employ them to encourage and help others. There's benefit to it. For six weeks now, We've looked at how God made each one of us unique and how he has shaped each one of us differently. How he has given you spiritual gifts, a heart, abilities, personality, and experiences. Folks, there is nobody like you in the whole wide world. You're unique. God shaped you to be unique. But why? He didn't do it just so you could be unique. He didn't put all of that effort there just so you could be different. He did it for a purpose. He did it so that you would be shaped for significance. That your life would matter. 
that you would make an impact with your life that nobody else can make because they've not had your experiences. God does not want you to waste and just store up these things in your mind and keep them all to yourself. He wants you to use the good and the bad to help other people. And folks, all you got to do is look around. There are people all around us that need to be ministered to. They need to be ministered in areas if we're just willing to look, see it, and then share the God-given shape that he's given us. What type of ministry should you be involved in? What type of service should you be doing based on God, how God has shaped you? Folks, it's time to give something back. Let's not waste our lives. Shall we stand and sing?